All right, here we go, gear or gadget. We're sitting down today, going to go over some hybrid reviews of some products that we've used, spent our own money on, uh, give our opinions on whether they worked, whether we think they're gear, whether we think they're gadgets, whether we buy them again, or throw them in a fire, throw them out, give them away, whatever. A uh, couple ground rules. Number one, we're not here to ban brand bash anything. Um, this is just our opinion on products, so you could take it or leave it. And rule number two, no usage of the term game changer. Fair why, enough. Why is that? I hate it. Like you, the, you go to the ATA show and somebody releases a new product and then you get on social media and everyone's like, oh my God, it's a game changer. What is, like, not, not really. Like, it's not changing anything. Yeah, the moral story, the game is the same, it's just changing how you do it. Yeah. All right, there you go. go. Oh, one other rule though. If you actually learn something or enjoy it, you have to hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already. That's the last rule. Exactly. Let's get into it. What I brought to the table is the best whitetail pack ever made. That's bold words. What? No. Boom. <laughs> right there. And this thing's kind of big, so you probably can't, I'm not going to see my ugly face any, anyways. But uh, what I have is the Sitka Tool Belt. We've all ran this. All three of us ran this for the entire 2020 season. Uh, got them over the summer, so we did spend some time scouting on them. But a little bit of background. I love backpacks. Like, I love... I don't know why. Like, um, even just scouting... Uh, you know, we're usually putting on more miles than what normal people would probably like, even in the big woods, like we're putting, we're getting after it basically. And a lot of times we're carrying a lot of gear cause we don't want to go back to the truck. And even in my everyday life, like I, I am typically carrying a backpack. I'm 38 years old and I'm still hauling around a backpack. I don't know why, but, uh, just kind of my personality, but some of the packs I've used in the past, I've ran Kuyu packs, uh, which are kind of high dollar. Um, I've had the cheapo like Gander Mountain or Cabela's, you know, white labeled packs, like what typically you would use as a whitetail hunter that have one big compartment, a couple side compartments, and basically no suspension or hauling system, very minimal, just basic shoulder straps. But I guess my complaint with, um, you know, I ran that Kuyu pack, that 1850, um, with a suspension system and I bought the carbon frame. And my thought process was behind that was, let me buy the whole thing. Let me buy the whole system. And then I can build on that. If I want to go out West or I'm doing a backcountry hunt or a backpack hunt, I have the frame, I have the suspension. I can add a, a bigger bag to that. And then I'm not out, you know, a thousand dollars buying an additional bag on top of my whitetail setup. Right. Um, so I ran that 1850 bag for three or four years. I've had that for quite a while. And the things I didn't like about it was not a whole lot of structure. Um, not a lot of compartment, different compartments to kind of keep things organized. Um, very loud zippers, very loud snaps, very loud scratchy material. Um, and ultimately like I just hated it as a hunting pack. It's a great scouting pack and you know, I will probably use that out West with a bigger bag and I think it'll, it'll serve its pur purpose, um, this year in Idaho. But as a tree stand slash saddle hunter, like to have a pack to, to be elevated in a set to hunt whitetails, it was absolutely terrible. So we upgraded to this uh, Sika fin or Sika tool, tool belt. belt. Sika tool belt, and basically, it's a the easiest way to explain it. It's a fanny pack on steroids. I mean, essentially, like last year, Cameron ran a fanny pack, and we made a bunch of fun of him because. You know, fanny packs were like a big thing in the 90s. You keep your... Had his, his coin purse on his bino baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> coin purse on his bino baby. Yes. Like fanny pack. Yeah. Have my extinguisher in the yeah. open front pocket. But, you know, in hindsight, he must have been onto something because eight months later, Sick comes out with this and um, it's phenomenal. So just to break it down real quick and give him my personal or our personal view on it. You have a couple dump pouches or cup holders here. Um, removable with um, kind of speed clasp or speed buckles. And then you have a bigger compartment here with um, you know several different 
inside compartments or kind of stash areas that, that are expandable with, with spandex. Um, you have, you can lock that down with a, I'm not sure what the proper term here is, but there's a large grommet and um, just a kind of a cinch tight um, stay on this with additional access on top. So you don't necessarily have to open or flip this whole thing up. You have access here with zippers. The one thing I want to mention about the zippers are, I don't know what Sika does different, what kind of different zippers they use, or if it's a coating, whatever, but their zippers are so more quiet than what other companies are using. And to me, like, that's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Like, you're going in and out zipping, like, you don't, the last thing you want to hear is zzz, 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 like, and I'm always cautious about kind of holding my fingers on the zipper to, to decrease the noise. You just don't have to worry about that as much with this pack. And it's designed where you don't have to use it. I mean, this could still be closed and you have this flapped open. You can still access the main cavity of the, the pack yeah, without even absolutely. unzipping There's it. There's another yep. Yep. piece of elastic there, though. Yeah, on the back side. And we'll show you guys some B-roll clips of this. But um, two smaller pouches kind of on the waistband or on the waist belt, I guess. Um, I keep batteries in one. I keep my tag in um, my tag and license in one. And then on the other side, I usually carry my milkweed there. So I have a little pill bottle, keep my milkweed in there. Um, and on top of that, the suspension system is pretty unique. So the shoulder straps and this kind of clothes hamper can all come off. So you can just use this as a fanny pack. But if you're like me in the big woods and you need to layer clothes and you can't wear everything in, this little hamper blows my mind about how much I can actually fit in there. Like just going in that late season hunt, I was able to fit my Fanatic upper or bottom, so either the bibs or the jacket. I couldn't fit both, but I could fit one or the other in that. And like going through November, I could fit everything that I was using while I was self-filming. So that's camera gear, that's water, that's food. Tree arm. Camera arm, bow hanger, um, extra layering clothes. I could fit everything in to this small little pack. And that was a concern I had was if I'm self-filming or doing like, carrying extra gear because I have to layer stuff because I'm walking so far in some of these chunks. I don't think I can be able to fit everything in there. And like, that just was not the case. And on top of that, while you're saddle hunting, you wear that over top of your saddle. And a lot of times I didn't even have to take this off my back when I was in the tree. Could leave it attached to me. Um, if I was taking it off like on an all day hunt, it's awesome. You just simply turn this thing around adjust your waist belt and clip this onto the tree and then you have access to everything right there in front of you so you're not reaching moving limbs around to get busted like everything's right there um, where you need it um, one additional feature on the bottom of the pack they have a couple straps here again with these kind of speed buckles and this is where this was cameron's idea um, that's how i transported my sticks so i would tuck my bee sticks in here and since these things down, so I have everything right underneath me and I could actually physically go up the tree without taking this off. And I could just get everything right, um, right off my body. So that's kind of what that looks like, super small profile. The only, and we talked about this in the office, like maybe we should talk to, to Chris about this, um, the product manager at, at Sitka. The only thing that I feel like they missed on is the orientation of these speed buckles being to your butt. So if you have this on your back and you have something underneath here um, that you need to get access to, these buckles are against your body and it's hard to get back into them where if they were on the outside, you could just right here, boom, and they're off. So um, that's probably a modification I'll probably make. I'll probably just cut those off and then re-sew them on. So those are, um, reversed but, i think um, the intention for that was actually for your bow hanger because i cut that sleeve off there was a sleeve like you yeah, still have the sleeve i still have the sleeve on there i think the intention was that you slide your bow hanger in that sleeve and you're good and then those other straps were for extra close so you could just strap those on so you're not really having you're never having to take those off while it's on your back mm -hmm. so maybe that's why it was designed that way mm -hmm. But for me, yeah, I use this pack all year as well. And I mean, I use it on every hunt. I put it through the ringer. And the only thing that broke was this elastic uh, strap on the dump pouch here. And I use these as my dump pouches. I didn't use dump pouches on my saddle. I just used these, so that, that was nice. It made my saddle lighter and less bulky. 
And um, for scouting, I use this a lot. So mm. now I'm using, uh, like, season's basically over. I'm tagged out in Ohio, and PA season's over. If I'm checking cameras or pulling cameras, this is the pack that I'm taking. And, like, I, I put all my solar panels and stuff in here, and then my cameras will go in this or uh, in these side pockets here, big enough for a trail camera. And then I put all my cords and battery packs and everything in here. It's, yeah, it's an all-around great pack. And I'll, I'll probably use it for turkey season. Like, just with these speed buckles, like, attaching a seat to that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's yeah. pretty versatile the way it was uh, the way it was designed. And they, and they do such a good job with most of their gear yeah. wings. I had the pleasure to talk with Chris about this. He was on the podcast. And, I mean, this came from customer's request. So enough people messaged in, emailed in, and said, we want something like this for mobile hunting, some sort of, you know, more heavy duty fanny pack. Uh, and that's what they designed. So that's cool to see that. I use this probably like 50% of the time. I still love the Fanatic pack that they created a couple years ago. It is just so, so, so quiet. I mean, to me, that's one of the biggest things is just having quiet gear. And it's, you know, there's mixed reviews on it. I love that thing. That's you know, earlier in the year I was using this. Um, I still use it, you know, sometimes throughout the year, but I still kept gravitating back to that Fanatic pack just because how quiet it is. Um, I don't really have, you know, solid ground to say why that is. This is where I gravitated towards. I mean, take it for a leave, but Sitka does the best job of engineering whitetail gear right now. And also, you know, by light years when it comes to packs. Oh, yeah. The whitetail market has been left in the dust when it comes to packs. Um, it's an afterthought for almost every other company, like you mentioned, a white label. And for break down what white label means, because I'm sure someone listening to that, there, what does that even mean? So a white label product is essentially just a product like someone would put their name on. It's not really their product. They didn't go through the development process of making that product. Like when you see the Cabela's brand trail camera, we use trail cameras for <laughs> example, because it, there's a ton of white label cameras out there. You have a factory that's building cameras and they go through the process that factory goes through the process of designing a camera so they own the ip they own the design they own the the everything to that camera and they give the opportunity to up uh, for other people or other companies to come in mm -hmm. and simply kind of put their name on that product and maybe they make minor tweaks maybe they don't but essentially they're using that someone else's product with their name on it so mm -hmm. That's, and, and that's across all industries, but yeah. we are obviously privy to it in the outdoor industry because, right. you know, we understand the manufacturing and, you know, we understand a little bit better. But, um, I mean, these are built from the ground up. These are specifically for whitetail hunters. I mean, honestly, their entire line is worth looking at. If you're looking to upgrade a, a, to a whitetail pack, uh, I, I think it's a, a pretty big upgrade from what most people are probably using right now. In my opinion, gear hands down gear. Um, we all purchased these too. So, you know, Sika didn't send this stuff to us. Yeah, and Chad, Chad bought his as soon as I opened mine. As soon as, yeah, as, as soon as I put my hands on, I'm like, this thing's awesome. I'm going to buy I, So I ordered one, but uh, yeah, gear, I would buy it again and again and again and again. Gear. I mean, I, I used it. I liked it. I liked the Fanatic a lot. Uh, even when their first evolution of whitetail packs, the, the tool bucket and toolbox, I think, I mean, those are, uh, major advancements in that category. So just to see that evolution continue to get better, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of them, in my opinion. Yep. Jake, take it away. Next thing, it's so small, so mighty, it's an SD card reader, okay? Now, the funny thing about this is in probably 2018, if you were on Facebook or Instagram, you saw a Facebook ad for a much cheaper version of this. And I think that thing probably caused more frustrations than uh, conveniences uh, for the time being. So if you asked me a year ago, I would say SD card, ugh. like, you know, and the reason I say that is because uh, your card get corrupted. The thing, this might not work. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things potentially wrong with the app. So anyways, this is just a, you can buy this on the Apple website. It is a certified Apple design device. I, uh, you know, Apple fanboy, I hate to say it. <laughs> Uh, so I have a lot of Apple, you know, I always have an iPhone and you just literally plug this right into your phone and you take the SD card right out of the camera and it pulls right up into your, you know, pulls up in your photos. You can go through, swipe through all of them. You can click which ones you want to save. And then also it already dates all those images onto your iPhoto. And then if you've got a Mac too, then it's going to go right back to your computer. So the deeper you get into that ecosystem, the, the more convenient and great that it gets. Um, obviously, 
the beauty of the cell camera is you get that instantaneous, but uh, when I'm going out to a stand, maybe in the afternoon, and there's a camera along the way, you best believe I'm checking it um, in terms of just being able to make your rounds as well and check them and then just put them right there on your your, your phone, like the major ones. I mean, I don't necessarily, like, cause how many times have you been to where you want to check a card, but you don't have a card and it's the Trek or it's a, you know, a camera without a screen. This, like, I might as well put this in my wallet because I bring it everywhere during, you know, really the whole year. So yeah. that's how important it is to me. That's no, that's, that's a good, a good pick for a product. And, um, you know, we spit out a bunch of content about SD card readers, why you shouldn't use them, how much trouble and frustration that they can cause. And then if you are going to use one, which one should you be using? And it is always like our recommendation. If you're using an Apple device, like it is the Apple certified reader. And again, it goes back to some of those white label products where, you know, factories making these things and they're spitting these things out. And the app is typically where you run into the most troubles. Like you get into some of those white label card readers and the apps are just clunky. Also white they crash. <laughs> yeah, the apps are, are white labeled. Um, and they crash, they're clunky. And ultimately like, it's just not, it's not worth spending the 10 or $15 on a cheaper one and having the frustration where you spend 30 bucks and- $25 on Amazon there Prime you go. right now. 25 <laughs> bucks and you're good for, and I use the same one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I use it too and I, I uh... I joke about like not having enough. I wish I had five or six of them because I'm always like, I just went down to uh, pool cameras last weekend or something and I couldn't leave a camera up because I couldn't check the card because I didn't have a card reader on me. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm going to have to pull the card and I don't have another one. Well, I might as well just pull the camera now. Mm -hmm. So I like, I bought three or four of them, put one in my truck, put one in my pack. I put one on my desk. Like I have them everywhere because yeah, that's something that I'll always take with me because you never know when you're going to need it. And most of the time, you don't have an extra SD card with you. No. So I Yeah, you can have them stashed, <laughs> stashed around in those places. But yeah, you need to have this. And I think uh, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Like I haven't had a single issue with it. It works great. Uh, it saves me in a pinch. And uh, I don't think it takes the place of taking that SD card and putting it in your computer and sorting them and kind of like organizing all that data. But when you're on the fly and then you can go back and send it and you can easily send it to your buddies. Yeah. Not, not that everyone does that, but you could. Yeah. If you're, um, if you're watching this and you're thinking like, man, I want to get one of those. We have a really good video on all about it, how to use it, yeah. how to import the photos, everything. So that'll be right up here and uh, you can get yourself familiar with uh, using one of those cards. But so I'm 10 gonna, out of 10 gear, Gear, 100%. Yeah, gear. Something every trail camera user should have. All right. Last I'm, thing. I'm up. What do you got? I'm fired up. I'm fired up about this one. This here is a ghillie suit. And this thing right here has killed two bucks on the wall for me. Mm -hmm. I've been hunting for five years. Two out of five ain't bad. So... Uh, I'll give credit to the hunting public. Um, they do, uh, they did previously, the last year they didn't really use it, but previously they did a ton of hunting out of ghillie suits and everyone talks about being mobile and uh, you gotta be mobile, you gotta move around, you gotta hunt where the deer are. Sometimes there's not a tree or sometimes you don't have enough time to get in a tree. And with this simple jacket, ghillie suit jacket, you can blend into a bunch of different types of terrain and you don't necessarily need as much cover and you can get closer to where you need to be when it matters. And yeah, I just, I just love it. I, I think it's something that every deer hunter should have in their arsenal. Now, I'm not saying go exclusively hunting out of a ghillie suit. Like don't go into an open hardwoods and sit in front of a tree and put this on and think you're gonna be covered. But if the situation is there and the opportunity is there, like for example, I'll just go over a quick hunt that I needed it. Um, at my dad's property in Pennsylvania, uh, we're watching this buck do the same thing every day. And we're like, well, we just can't get to him. There's no trees. And there was grass that was probably, I don't know, waist chest high. I took a chair, a stool, like a, a little tripod blind stool, sat it in the middle of that grass, put this thing on, and I shot that bucket like 10 feet. He had no idea it was there. So ghillie suit just adds another, uh, this is another tool to your toolbox. It's Gives you another opportunity. Uh, get on the ground, even if you don't have a ghillie suit, ground hunting is super, super effective. 
And yeah, I am a, I'm a firm believer. I even left a review on our podcast as the ghillie suit kid. So yeah, I think you actually let me use that when I went on the Missouri trip and um, I had the opportunity to use it on a ground setup. I was kind of tucked into a cedar, cedar tree and kind of in this transition area uh, between some bedding and a food source where some deer were using. And there's a couple sporadic cedars kind of throughout. And I'm not saying I wouldn't have had that encounter if I did not have that ghillie suit, but it left me a lot more confident not having to go in and like brush something in and have some cover out in front of me. I kind of just tucked myself in off to the side and ultimately had a, a, a good encounter with a with a buck that I should have killed the day before. But Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, there's no noise. It's super quiet. Yeah. Um, I will throw this thing on real quick and show you a couple modifications if you are going to get one. So what brand is that? I don't know, man. I bought it from Gander Mountain. Gander Mountain went out of business, but mm -hmm. I'm not, not entirely sure. So I took this arm and just cut it off because when you're drawing your bow, all these things being on this arm could easily get caught. I also went on my left arm, which is my um, what I have on the riser, and I cut all the little strings and stuff off so there's nothing that can get caught in the way. So... I mean, this one's pretty nice. It just snaps shut. It's pretty big. You can wear it over top of whatever you need. It has a hood, which I think is pretty beneficial because it breaks up the outline of your head. And yeah, I mean, go full diver mode right now. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. This this is responsible for two 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 bucks last year, three weeks apart. So I'm a firm believer in the ghillie suit. I will. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep it pretty short. It kind of explains itself here. The one thing I'm gonna to add to add to that is, and it's kind of obvious, but we're gonna say it anyways, and you see all the stuff we're scraping off the table here. But when I had this thing on in Missouri, like it collects, like I was in some, I think they're called cockle, cockle birds. Oh yeah, gosh. Like, I mean, you see it, they're just sprays of, of thread and string. Like they get tangled in everything. I had sticks wedged in there and like, so you gotta be kind of be cautious of, of that i mean that's the only downside that i can really yeah and what chad did wrong when he used it was wear it in <laughs> yeah <laughs> pack it in and put it on when you get to where you're hunting so yeah. you don't get that stuff Pro but tip. um i will say that i think this off season i'll be making my own and i won't be using these little strings mm -hmm. and i'll just use these because these don't get tangled mm -hmm. yes. it's just a little piece of fabric camo fabric and yeah that's that's basically all you need it's just something to break your outline up and it, blend into grasses and brush a lot better yeah. it's gear gear for me too i don't own one but i would buy, i would buy one but are you going to um well for kansas this coming year awesome. like it's yeah it's a real possibility yeah gotcha i haven't used this type of ghillie i bought the uh it's the first light phantom yeah, yeah. um i've used Leafy. that Leafy yeah jacket. i've used that uh i used that this year just a couple times earlier in the season um I don't really have anything to speak of it, but I see the purpose. Uh, you've had success with it. Uh, so for that, like guilty by association, I have to say that's gear. I mean, I've seen it work. Yeah, the leafy jacket works too. I mean, I mm -hmm. use the leafy for turkey season more. And then um, sometimes out, out of my saddle this year, I would throw my leafy jacket on and get up in a tree. But um, for ground hunting and stuff, I think this just does a better job of breaking your outline up than leaves. But that's it for me. That is a wrap on this episode of Gear or Gadget. Uh, if you find value in these types of things, please give us a thumbs up. If there's any products that you're using that you think uh, people need to know about, leave those in the comments below and uh, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and we'll see you next time.